Welcome to today's video in the LLMware Fast Start Series. Today, we are gonna be going through example number five. Just to remind you, um, for those who have been um, following through this sequentially, in the first three examples, we focused on how do you build a knowledge base. We looked at how do you vectorize that knowledge base and create embeddings. In the third example, then we talked all about prompts and how you start loading models and start running inferences using prompts. In the last three examples, it's really about how you bring those pieces together, combining knowledge, some form of a retrieval strategy, with LLM-based generation. In the last example, we spent a lot of time, we really went through in detail some of these key concepts of how you start merging a knowledge base into a prompt. In example five, we're gonna build on that. And example five, in many ways, is really the payoff of all the examples that you've gone through, because this illustrates probably the most popular RAG recipe today, which is how do you combine some form of semantic natural language querying against a knowledge base to pull back relevant passages and text, and then use that in a call with an LLM to use that exact same query in natural language as the basis then for answering in an LLM generation. So that's what we're gonna walk through. Again, the example is gonna build off a lot of the pieces that we've gone through in examples one through four. So let's go ahead, let's dive right in and flip over to the code. A lot of this is gonna to start to look familiar if you've walked through all of these examples. So I'm gonna walk through it a little bit more quickly. If it's a little too fast at any key point, please go back and watch one of the previous examples or work through them. I'll try to reference them as we go through this code. So first things first, we are gonna use a SQLite. We are gonna set that a no install option. Feel free, of course, to flip that over to Mongo or Postgres. Again, separate instructions and examples on how to do that. In this case, for our embedding model, we're gonna use an industry-specific embedding model based on open source sentence transformer. It's the industry BERT contracts, since in all of these examples, we're actually using contracts as our knowledge base. So we're gonna use a contract fine-tuned um, embedding model. We're gonna use FACE as our vector database because it doesn't require any installation. But of course, please feel free. We support you know eight different vector databases. Uh, they're separate instructions, easy Docker Compose scripts on how to deploy them. So please feel free to flip the switch um, and move over to any of those vector databases. We're gonna create a simple library. We're gonna use a CPU-based model. If you want to use OpenAI, as always, please feel free. You can just uncomment these two lines and pass in your, your uh, API key. Now the script itself, again, a lot of the elements of this are gonna to start to look familiar. We're gonna create a library. We're gonna pull down sample documents. We're gonna add those files to the library. We're then gonna install our embedding and we'll actually see uh, running through that process, very similar to example number two. We're then gonna load our model. And in this case, you'll note, we're gonna ask one natural language query. The natural language query is we have all these executive employment agreements. You've seen the examples. You have some familiarity now with some of the things that are in that document. We're gonna ask the, the key question. What is the executive's um, base annual salary? Now, in the previous examples, we did a lot of text queries. We did a lot of other things where you could see how to use the query object. In this case, we're gonna run a semantic query. Again, similar to what we did in example two. And we're gonna ask that query and we're gonna ask it across the whole library we're gonna get up to 50 results, and we're gonna set an embedding distance threshold of one. So anything within that embedding distance threshold is what we're gonna look at and what we want to get in our results. We're then gonna iterate through the actual contracts, so the file path, name, name by name by name of the contracts. We're gonna do a little bit of matching here. Um, so what we're gonna be looking for is in those results, those 50 semantic results that we just got, we wanna find the match, if we can find one, for the name of that specific contract. We're gonna display that on the screen so you can see some of the top retrieval passages that we found. We're then gonna add that, those query results, as a source to our prompt, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run the prompt. Quick note here, just as an aside, if you are working on Windows, that's what that slightly awkward code is for, just to make sure that the code actually is gonna run both on Mac and Linux as well as on Windows, that split. Uh, the OSCEP is there for. Uh, we're then gonna print out the results. Let's go ahead and let's run the script. And again, we're gonna walk through the whole life cycle that we've seen so far, which is you know parsing the documents and creating that library, then going and creating and installing the embeddings, and then finally working through a cycle of the query, getting the top results document by document, and then asking those questions through an LLM call. So right now, we're actually just starting the embedding process. So you can see we finished the first tranche of embeddings using our industry BERT contracts model. This will be done in probably about 30 seconds or so. 
And as I mentioned when we were looking at example two, depending on the memory of your system, you may want to look at a smaller um, batch size. But typically, larger is going to go faster. So now we're done with the embeddings. We've just created that embedding on that library. We've asked our query. And now what we're doing is we're going document by document by document. You can see the top retrievals. That's the semantic query for each of those documents. And then you can see the LLM answer. So we're moving through this fairly quickly. As soon as we're done with the results, I am going to go back and we can actually explain what each of these results is actually showing us. But again, you can see really, really nice speed clicking through this. So now coming back, this is a, hopefully a familiar step at this point. We ingested those 15 documents, we parsed them, we decomposed them into 1,272 blocks. We indexed those text blocks in our SQLite database. As the next step then, we actually took our industry BERT contracts embedding model. We ran each of those 1,272 text chunks through that model. We got a vector of 768 dimensions on the output side. We stored that vector in our face database. We then ran our query and got all of these results based on our key question of what is the executive's base salary. And then, because we wanted to look at this on a document by document basis, we actually iterated through our file path so you can see the names of the agreement. And then we pulled out from our top retrieval list, those 50 results that we found, what were the top retrievals that were found for that specific document? Again, a very useful thing when you wanna be able to run one semantic query but then do a little bit of filtering where you can start to identify and narrow it down document by document. What this shows us, in this case, it, it has the, the top four retrievals associated with this first agreement. This showcases for us the distance. So this is the distance in the embedding space. And you can see it did a pretty nice job, actually, of recovering things that were all around you know, base salary and incentive compensation, and then used these top retrievals. That was actually packaged when we added our source that was packaged along with the question to the LLM, and we got our answer back from the LLM. The nice thing about printing and displaying the query results there is we can quickly eyeball, and you can see, yep, there we are. Here was the key passage that was part of the, the source that we passed to the LLM call, and you can see that in this case, the model did get the correct answer based on what we had passed. So work through this example. Hopefully the key concepts are pretty clear. As always, feel free to experiment with different embedding models, different LLMs, and different underlying source materials. This is a very, very important recipe of using a semantic natural language query, both to do the retrieval part, as well as then the question that you're asking to the LLM. As always, we hope you've enjoyed today's video. Any questions, come check us out on Discord. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, take care and hope everybody has a wonderful day.